the Ribeiro Galaxy. A whole lot of stars with a whole lot of problems. But for one zany crew of spacers, problems equaled cold hard credits. Hop aboard, Starship Phil! Episode 1, The Green Star. Yes, you Horton Green Man! Oh, three-quarter life three. You were worth the wait. Captain? Hey, Stan. <sighs> Beat the game in three hours. Actually, you've been playing your game for eleven hours. Eleven? I told you to alert me after- I did, Captain. And your response was, I swear to sort those, Stan. If you say one more thing, I will personally rip out your mainframe and stick it right in Big's latrine. Oh. Yes. Oh. Then what do you want? This is your alarm, Captain. You be waking up right now. I you played, played through your whole sleep, sleep cycle. cycle. Drock. All right, let's start the day. Where are we, Stan? We are currently between the Varignon and Dean system. Skirting the entire fringe of the Radic Republic. Ah, just down the street from home. Where's my crew at? Eliza is consulting the star map. Big Sal is in the medical bay. Big surprise. Jarlie is in between the hyperwarp drive and the life support regulator. The vent closest to her position is near the mess hall. Where you will also find Elephos, who appears to be making coffee. A bot making coffee? That's not suspicious. So, what's for breakfast? We have 77 capacity of eggs benedict ration paste, 47 steak and eggs ration paste, 80% chicken fried rice ration paste, and we are all out of blueberry oatmeal ration paste. I'd kill for some actual food. Good morning, sort of. Eliza? Good morning, sort of. To you as well, Captain. We are currently between... The Vigneron and Dean systems. Stan told me already. Captain, what do you want for breakfast? Oh! Uh, chicken fried steak, I guess. Don't look at me like that. You're the one who ate all the blueberry oatmeal paste. I did nothing of the sort. Anyway, as you can see, our trajectory will bring us close to the ore field outpost. We could resupply on essential goods there. Like blueberry oatmeal paste? Essential goods, Captain. All right, rest your thorax. Chart a course for Orthiolf. As you wish, Captain. Breakfast, ten minutes. <laughs> Captain, you're awake. More or less. So what are- ah! And what the fun did you just inject me with? Extract of the flexor, more adrenal glands. <laughs> It'll wake you up. Look, Big, I don't- Whoa! Okay, yeah, there it is. <laughs> we Galoosh use it as an announcer on the battlefield. Don't worry, if it's too overwhelming on your small, fragile human heart, I can resuscitate you. You know we humans have coffee for this sort of thing, but hey, thanks for the possible heart attack. You're very welcome, Captain. If it isn't my favorite murder bot. You've never complained when we're in the thick of it, Trent. That's Captain Trent, or Captain Praxis. Or just One sugar Captain. or two, Trent. Since when did you start playing Barista, Eliphas? I know approximately 6,242 ways of killing a human with coffee. But I don't know a thing about how to make a cappuccino. I want to remedy that. Please, have a cup. I applaud you for being productive. But I think I'll stick to Big Sal's flaxer mole shot. <sighs> Hello, Captain. Did you sleep well? Well... I... He played his game the whole time. The whole time? Between the shot and your erratic sleep schedule, I weep for your sad, quivering human heart. You know, it's those kinds of quips that make me not want to drink your coffee, Eliphas. Anyway, how's old Phil doing, Jarley? The ship is in tip-top condition, Captain. I cleaned out the heating rod in Engine 6, and I hope you don't mind, but I used some of my excess to replenish three coolant tanks. And there was a Kurgler infestation in the lower cargo hold. 
but it was small enough for me to make a tasty snack. Thanks, Jarley. I know I can always count on you. Oh, Captain! If I had a heart, it'd be positively fluttering from the sheer chemistry between human and disgusting gelatinous blob. You know, I may not be able to digest you, but I can still trap you and erode your circuits. Slowly. Very slowly. You may not feel pain, but when your systems break down one after the other, you'll be flailing around like a Gaborthkin eel while wishing you had perfected those blueberry muffins you wasted all our ration paste trying to make. Whoa, whoa! Let's all just calm down. Nothing but smiles on board, right? <laughs> ah, Yardley and the rest of are as it again, eh? Captain, I really do not understand why you put up with it. Leave the statistics to one with a computer processor for a brain, you wrote. <sighs> Say that again, Elifas. Attention crew. Breakfast is served. Chicken fried steak ration paste. A la mode. A la mode means there's ice cream on top, Stan. That was a joke. Bon appetit. <sighs> Nothing but smiles. Orth no found post? Whose idea was it to come to the stink hole of the galaxy? Eliza's. Oh, cheap prices are plenty. Many options from diverse cultures. This was a great idea. My old Eliza Mundra has always been a smart one, ever since she was a larva. Oh, when she was only four, she made her first. Oh, what's on the list? Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Uh, we need uh, 1,400 gallons of starship coolant, <laughs> ammunition for the repeater blaster cannons, <laughs> the God Weaver slip buster, and the Agogi bolt throwers. Then, then, uh, refills on ration base, and, um, mm -hmm, something Glorfarbian and crunchy. Oh, Captain. Good weaver, ship buster. Her name's Sasha, damn it. Hey, look, they have a bounty kiosk. You think the captain would want us poking around on there? <sighs> The folks giving the jobs are usually as dangerous as the jobs themselves. It's worth a peek, at least. Fine. State your name and affiliation. Uh, Big Sal of Starship Bill. Sorry, no current registry for a Big Sal of Starship Phil. Please repeat. Say, while you do this, I'll take the list and do the shopping. Bye. Thank you. You kiss your mother with that mouth. I ate my mother, you confounded voice box. State your name and affiliation. Big Cell of Starship Phil. Due to multiple login failures, please answer these security questions. Damn it! That's what I'm talking about. Keep it coming. Nothing beats dwarven beer. And I'm quite partial to this serving of trox larva. They are most delectable when they are fresh from the egg. I don't know how you can eat those. I've met a few trox and they're almost as sentient as you, Trenier. All of these millennia in the galaxy and you humans still have yet to fully grasp traditions outside of your Martian fundamentals. Hey, don't lump me in with the Reds. I was born Radicchia. Forgive me, Captain. Trox larva secrete defensive slime that causes Trenier to lose their sense of self. You mean, they make you drunk? Hell yeah! Hey Dave! One more depressing bowl of larva for my navigator here! Coming right up, mister. Is that not the same bartending bot you encountered on Daruga 5? Right, you don't go to a lot of bars. Dave's aren't bots. They're robots built by the Radic Republic to tend bar. You'll find them all over the place as long as we're in Radician space. And what do bots think of these days? <laughs> Not fondly. That's why bots aren't allowed in bars here. Captain? Uh-huh? I do not think it is wise for us to be intoxicating ourselves when we are supposed to be shopping for supplies. 
All these millennia in the galaxy and Utrineer still have yet to fully grasp traditions outside of your insectoid fundamentals. This is called bonding, where two buddies share some stories and some intoxicants, leading to a friendship that could outlast a supernova. I enjoy this bonding. That a girl! Hey! Hey, I'm talking to you, Garfester! Get out of Shut up! Ah, hello, my little boom dwarf. Mmm. Trox larva. May I? Taste the things just like. Mmm. Trox radar. I thought exactly. Hello, Captain. Hey, Jarley. Sal. Did you guys get the stuff? I did. The depot vendor was the Gromsh and tried to sell me 20 credits per gallon of coolant, but the threat of being slowly dissolved in my acid set him straight. Ah, Jarley. You're absolutely amazing as always. Oh, Captain. And we've got a job. Do we now? What kind of job? Perhaps we should speak in private. That is, to deter these droppers. I know you can hear me, Christian. I said get... <laughs> And you won't see that. Did hey, uh, oh, someone no. hear a laser blast? Chuck shot uh, I didn't. Mm -mm. Mm, still got it. <sighs> oh, father. <laughs> Leather. So what's going on, Big? Yeah, Big. What job did you choose? Choose? Ugh. By Zorthos, Big, you used a bounty kiosk. It was worth it, Captain. I signed us up for a salvage mission on a decrepit dwarven dreadnought. Wow. That actually sounds pretty good. I'm impressed. In the lock system. Uh, what? Ig, do you know where the lock system is? Uh, uh. Eliza? It is the solar system surrounding the green star. Which means. Lethal doses of radiation. Oh. Very good. Couldn't we just buy shield harnesses? Even the best harnesses only offer three hours of protection, Big. And we'd have to dawn them as soon as we enter the system, so we'd be on a time clock anyway. Come on. We're going back to the kiosk and canceling the job. I'm not about when to- When I saw Starship Phil responded to my job, I thought Colin spiked my good leaf. Funt. But here you are, Captain Trentleton Praxis, gracing my presence again. <clears throat> Mr. Grendel, about the Don't job- Don't you talk to the boss, Praxis. Did you forget your 17 large in the hole? Now, you want to insult him more by walking away from his job? You've got some balls, Praxis. Lay off of him, Wart. <laughs> 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 is, is this talking dessert yours, Praxis? Looks lamb flavored. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we find a way to resist the radiation, we will likely have to contend with the Greenskin. Well, maybe Mr. Big Sal should have considered that before he signed off on the job. She has a good point, Grendel. I'll kill you! Guys! Guys, stop! Better listen to the man, Greyskin. <laughs> Captain, this is suicide. Let us be done with these. We're taking the job, Mr. Grendel. Just tell us what we're looking for. Getting real sick of you talking to- <laughs> Shut it! <clears throat> Some Rogothka dwarves were delivering a shiny red box to me when their... engines gave out. The squats probably got cooked in the radiation. And now, my shiny red box is sitting in the cargo hold. I want it back. Whatever else on board is yours. Although I do recommend you use some of the salvage to pay off your debt. It'd be a shame to blast your knees right after you become the legendary first human to survive the Green Star. Right? Now drink up. And get going. We don't want the Greenies getting their hands on that box. For your sake. Come on, you two. The Bullmans think I don't know about their deal with the Fringe Boys. And I want to shake down every credit they got. <laughs> Sounds fun, boss. Oh, can't we grab a bite from him before we shake him? That deli's got some good sandwiches. Shut it, Hob. 
What are you thinking, Captain? No organics outside of the greenskins can survive those rads. Good thing we have our resident murder bot, then. Uh, this is a bad idea. You're the one that got us into this mess. So whatever salvage we get, you're donating 90% of your share, you lughead. Now, let's get going. Can I run a quick errand? You got 15 minutes. Thank you. Everybody else to the ship. Five minutes until we arrive, Captain. Can we go over the plan again? What? Not enough memory in that hard drive of yours? Get flushed, Ooze. No, it's because this plan sounds so boneheaded that my processor can't comprehend how stupid this whole idea is. What's there to comprehend? We load you into a torpedo bay, fire you at the wreckage, you get inside, find the red box, and you leave. You make it sound so simple. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Captain, we have arrived. By the moons of Gorvok. That's a dwarven ship? pro Gothgar engineering is a marvel, isn't it? <laughs> you could say it there. Compensating. Big, be nice. Captain, if I may. Dude. Judging by my scans of the Hogarker vessel, the ship itself has not been dealt any severe external damage. And even then, the dents could be dismissed as an asteroid collision. The engines are still intact, and life support systems are running on auxiliary power. Whatever disabled the vessel, it was not the green skins or the engine failure. Hmm. Spooky. All right, Elephas. Lock and load. And while you're in there, keep an ocular lens open for whatever took out the dwarves. Yes, Trent. Hey, Big. If you accidentally miss the ship, I won't tell. Oh, you're bad. I can hear you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, Captain? What? Oh, you gotta be drucking me! It appears to just be one battleship, Captain, but... Orcs travel in bands. How long until they arrive at the Dwarven ship? Approximately 15 minutes. Loaded. We should withdraw, Captain. We do not have the weapon capacity to battle the Green Fleet. Trent. I'm not about to make more of an enemy out of Rom Funting Grendel. We have to do this. <laughs> Leave those greenskins to me. The rivalry between Kashluk and Orc has gone on for thousands of years. Father, no. Even you do not have the strength to resist an entire horde of greenskins. Fret not. I once battled the Green Tide for six days with a squadron of only three soldiers, and we only had enough ammo to last us four days. And we... Big! Take aim! Fine. If you're going to play this game, I am locked and loaded, Captain. <laughs> Bot away. What are your orders now, Captain? You said you held the orcs back for six days. Think you can give our robo-buddy half an hour? <laughs> You're about to see why the people of Garyan V call me the Butcher of Haryur. I already know mine. Asher Lannister. <laughs> I fought on the battlefield of many wars and combated many foes. Piss off, I'm watching my stories. Even I could not Boss, break through. we're coming up on the spot ship. Bontog Garvaloon. Fine. Boss on the bridge! Yes, me. What's the situation? We found the dwarf ship, but these shoobies were here when we arrived. Hmm. Fire a few rounds at them and they'll take off. As for that squat ship, send a squad of our boys in to find out what's in there. Did... Did the shoobs actually hit us? Boss, they just took out one of our stabilizer engines! <laughs> well, look at the balls on them, picking a fight with the greenskins on their own turf. Whatever's on that squat ship must be really nice if he's nitwits are throwing punches for it. Firing, boss! Send the boys over. Tell them I'm sorry they have to miss the fun. The landing could have been better, but otherwise the paint is barely scratched. <laughs> Look at this place. Such large hallways for such short people. Dwarven pride, I suppose. Now where is... Ah, there you are. Hmm, good. Auxiliary power also supports the onboard computer. Let's see. Okay, there's the cargo hold. Down 40 levels, eh? 
If I find the right shaft, it should take me straight to... Hey, this. Eliphaz! What is it, Jarley? I am very busy. On your way out, could you bring me a dwarf body or two? It's been a while since I've ate dwarven. Does Trent approve of you eating sentient meat? Just aim for the bridge, damn it! Huh? Who's the butcher here? Let me work. What he doesn't know won't hurt me. Fine, I'll be sure to grab a body or two. Where are the bodies? Ugh, stinks of dwarf in here. When are the squats gonna learn that green skins are just naturally superior? We hit harder. We win more fights. We're cooler. And we smell better. <laughs> uh, so, so, what are we looking for again? I wasn't really paying attention to the debriefing. How much black stuff did you drink? None of your business. Come on, boys. Let's just find out what happened to the squats and... Uh, please tell me that was your stomach. Swamlin! <laughs> They put up a good fight. All integrity at 87%, Captain. Just keep firing, Big. We need to give Eliphas all the time he needs. Captain, according to these readings, the orcs have already landed a boarding party. Don't worry. I'm sure our little murder bot can handle a few greenskins. Captain, there are six more orc battleships approaching from Hyperwarp. They will be on us in less than 20 minutes. Hey, uh, Eliphas? Any progress on finding that box? I'm 11 floors down from the cargo hold. Now no more talking. Bots don't do well in tight spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Not a word, you two. The reason I ask is because we have a bunch more orcs coming, and we need to skedaddle yesterday, okay? Roger. Captain, orc fire's incoming. Oh yeah, now it's a party. Eliphas, you better hurry. The Gashlu takes the job. The Gashlu can't shoot straight from the sounds of it, but all I get is, you better hurry. Sure, bots may be immune to radiation, but it's not like we don't feel it. Like an itch all over the body that we can't scratch. <sighs> Here we are. Just gotta open these doors and... <sighs> we have... We have Swarm. Lots and lots of Swarm. Don't mind me, lads. I'm just a courier. <laughs> you really don't have an interest in anything that you can't convert, are you? I see where all the dwarves went. You've all certainly made yourselves at home. I imagine my creators would love for me to exterminate each and every one of you as part of my programming. But I'm here on a mission, so just focus on eating those green skins, okay? Eliphas, have you found the box? Trent, be quiet. You're stirring them up. Um, stirring who up? It's a calm lake. There's no one here with me. I... Trent, I found it. It's too big to get out the way that I came in, so... Time to improvise. Firing Giga Cannon! Their cannon is pretty damn good. Not bad for a bunch of shoobies. Boss, we've lost contact with the boarding party. How? They said the ship was derelict. We'll play back their last transmission. <laughs> The place is infested with swarm. They must have moved in before we got here. Doesn't matter. Send in a party with burners to roast them. Boy, find that. There's something happening on the lower levels of the divorce ship. What is that? Zoom and enhance. A bat. And it's got the box. Blow them out of the stars. <laughs> oh, he wants to dance. Take I'll find it if I do say so myself. 
Olafoss is approaching. He has the package. Pick him up and let's get the fuck out of here! Captain, I think the Greenies are mad. What do you mean? Their fighters are retreating and... That's a lot of cannons. That's a lot of cannons aiming at us! Eliza, punch it! <sighs> Almost there. Almost. Wait. Too fast, too fast, too- <coughs> Damn it! Eliphas, hang on! We're getting out of here! Entering hyperwarp in three, two... <coughs> Hall integrity at 87%, Captain. Blast knocked out our hyperwarp drive. I'm on it! Big, give our favorite Jello all the time she needs! Boss, we're locked onto the bridge. <laughs> Good. Bye-bye, shoobies. Yes! The gas lug, He's... That harness won't protect you for long, Big. So don't get too carried away out there unless you like being cooked by rats. <laughs> the butcher of Hyu. The battle baron of Thraxis Prime. The harbinger of despair. The prelude of carnage, Arengar Torvus, Abon the Mod, the scourge among Shagoth, and the beasts of a thousand sorrows, where you orcs can call me Big Sal, and this is my lady, Sasha, and you will know our name is Doom itself. <laughs> <laughs> you alright? Yeah, he's just saying that thing with his titles again. Stan, status report on Jarley and the hyperwarp drive. Nowhere fast. Jarley found a wad of your hair and is contemplating keeping it or dissolving it so a part of you will be forever a part of her. Ew. Give me the comms. Jarley, forget the hair! If you fix the drive now, I'll remove more paneling from my bedroom wall so you can watch me sleep easier. Status report, Stan. She squeed with joy and is fixing the hyper warp drive now. That's more like it. Watches you sleep? She's not trying to kill me, so I don't mind. Crap! Big! Big! Are you there? <coughs> I'm, I'm alright. I'm just clutching the edge of the ship. Holding on for dear life, Sasha, I lost her. I couldn't save her, Captain. Just hang on, Big. The hyperwarp drive is almost fixed. Easier said than done. I'm starting to slip, Captain. Big, it's going to be all right. Hold on. What did Eliza, Mundra, my little Eliza? Are you there? Stop talking like you're about to perish. It is disturbing me. This is how it ends for me, daughter. It's all right. I just wish I knew the name of the one who defeated the madness of a hundred stars. The persecutor of discord. The lesser god of chaos. The king under the crimson sky, the dread emperor, and the pauper of bubbles. I love us. Magnetized feet. Now on your feet, your lordship. Father? Father? Are you there? I saved him. The legacy of the Geshlug of many titles lives on. Eliphas! You beautiful machine! Do you have the box still? He does. He does. It's a much, much bigger box than we were probably expecting. <laughs> Eliphas, may I see your arm? Anywhere along the lower decks. Aim and fire! Fire in the Breach in the barracks. Clever bastard. Grab a blaster and cover the exits. No bug. He's setting one claw on my bridge. What about the box? Give me the name of that ship. This is an over gash lug. That's a lot of swarm. Are you inside the ship? Father? I'm alright, my little Gumbor. Thanks to Eliphas here. Eliphas? The box is secured. 
Thank me later. Stan? Eliza? You would say, I am punching the captain. Let's get the funt out of here! Hyperwarp engaged. Warstard! Boss. What? We caught the name of the ship. Bring it up! Phil? The starship is called Phil? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hooray! And here's to the best damn crew a handsome man legend like me could ever ask for. Big Sal, great shooting! <laughs> Why, thank you, Captain. And Eliza, that piloting was as beautiful as your chitin. Blush, Captain, I would. And you, Jarley. Uh, me, Captain? You gorgeous talking dessert. I could kiss you for the good work you did on that hyperwarp drive. Oh, Captain, you're turning me red. Where are you going? I am going to try and perfect that cappuccino. Not yet, you're not. I'll admit, Eliphas, when we first brought you on board, it was more out of fear than respect or any genuine desire to get to know you. Charm. Well, let me finish. It was more out of fear than respect or any genuine desire to get to know you, but the moment you single-handedly stormed a dwarven ship full of swarm, brought back the box, and then rescued Big, you not only gained our respect, but I consider you an official part of the crew. I am flattered, Trent. Eliza, set a course for Orthiolf Outpost, and let's get that box oh, to- you don't need to worry about Mr. Grendel and his friends, Captain. What do you mean? What did you do? Earlier, at Orthiolf Outpost. How are you doing, Mr. Grendel? I'm doing quite well. Thank you, Otro. You three been around the Bowman's Diner in the last hour? Witnesses say a group of punks roughed up the old couple and broke Mr. Bowman's legs. Oh, how dreadful and unfortunate. But I assure you, officer, my friends and I were just out on a nice stroll, listening to the hum of the outpost shield generator. Say, Otro, we did happen to find a hundred credits on the ground a while back. Since you and your boys have been so good to our community, I'd like to make a personal donation to you, in recognition for all your hard work. <laughs> How generous of you, Mr. Grendel. <laughs> Bye, Alfred. That'll teach the Fringe Boys to butt out of your territory. Everyone knows Orthiolf West belongs to Rom Grendel. Well, if what Mike said about that box is true, then when Captain Turd Praxis brings it, I'll be running this whole sector. And the Fringe Boys will be running scared. <sighs> no, Hob. The Fringe Boys will be space dust. What about Praxis? <sighs> I'll snap that scrawny halfwit's neck, torch his crew, and sell that junk a ship of his for pots. Who's gonna miss a bunch of low-life spacers? <laughs> <laughs> Like someone's septic is running over. Scrawny halfwit? Is that what you called him? The only scrawny ones are you three. But I think together you'll make a hearty enough meal. Hob, you blaster! Now! No! Not like this! Not like. And then I sold their blasters and other gear for a hundred credits. So you're not only debt free. You're also a hundred credits richer. Well, at least there's no trace of them left. Then what are we going to do with the box? Hmm. Let's worry about that after the party. Drinks all around! <laughs> yeah! Trent, unfortunately your blood pressure and your brain waves are exhibiting signs of impending... sudden sleep. This is why you don't play games through your cycle. Jarley, take him to his chamber, please. Gladly! Now, if you'll all excuse me, I have a caffeinated beverage to perfect. Enjoy your alcohol and, um, your rabble-rousing. Uh, have fun, machine. And, uh, uh, good job today. Thank you, Big. Never a dull moment on this ship. <laughs> Indeed, Miss Jarley. Who said that? Another day, another credit. That's the motto for the crew of Starship Phil. 
the dashing Captain Trent Praxis. Oh, so dashing. The intellectual Eliza of Sal. The brutish Big Sal. The curious Elethos. And the calculating Stan. A group of renegades, outlaws, and has-beens, all brought together for a single purpose, to make lots and lots of credits, and have lots and lots of fun doing so. Don't miss the continuation of their incredible adventures by liking, sharing, and subscribing to Path of Dragons Radio. See you in the next episode of Starship Phil. This is Ozzy Van Horn here to give some much needed kudos to our luxurious cast of amazing voice actors who made this first episode absolutely perfect. Marcus Rothenberg nailing it as Captain Trent Praxis. Not far from his side is Ord Eliza Mundral, Eliza of Sal, played by the beautiful Little Betty. And then there's Balcasaurus giving it his all with Big Sal. Right behind him is Araya Mackay, providing the voice of Little Jar Lee, everyone's favorite acidic dessert. And then Old School Frisbee, playing the role of Stan the Artificial Intelligence. But then, where would these heroes be without their villains? Chris Norris played the voice of Corthog the Devastator, and his crew, played by Kenna Leanne, Thomas Robertson, and Megan McConnell, and then finally, the Orc Warriors 1 and 2, played by Rhino Boyle, joined by Riker Douglas on the unfortunate sojourn into that dwarven ship. <laughs> then we have Juna Sinkinen, I really hope I got that name right, playing video game villain, distressed patron, and drunken patron. And then of course there's Jerry Harris playing Rom Grendel, being flanked by Harb, played by Skylar Giordano. And then we have the Kiosk voice, played by Mysterious and ASMR. And Gina Moravec, playing Distress Patron number 3. And that corrupt patrolman Arthro, played by Enderfan2120. I want to give each and every one of you a very firm and very warm thank you for making Starship Phil Episode 1 just simply amazing. Of course, you'll be hearing more from me and the lovely crew of ours in the future. So, how about you uh, do me a little favor there? Give that little like button a tickle. And if you want to, why don't you share with your friends and get these voice actors' as talents all over the place. They would certainly enjoy it. And of course, subscribe to Path of Dragons Radio. The button's right there. What are you waiting for, huh? Just give it a little tap, and you'll be hearing from us in no time. Well, maybe sometime, but I guarantee you, it'll be well worth the wait. This is Ozzy Van Horn, signing off.